Hey, 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 guys, what's up, it's the Culture Detective here, I look like a total idiot with this haircut, but who cares, I'm gonna do a review on the TV show called Stranger Things, and it's latest season, season 3, I know I'm late, shut up, so yeah, Netflix original Stranger Things is one of the most popular TV shows ever, behind Game of Thrones, it's set in the 80s where a town called Hawkins in Indiana gets terrorized by a monster every season, and they all live in an evil parallel dimension called the Upside Down. And then we have the kids saving the day every single time, especially for Eleven, who is a girl with te telekinetic powers. Yeah, so she can basically move things with her mind, and she can also, you know, vibe her mind into people so that she can spy on where they are, but yeah, anyway. The first season was surprisingly good with its likable characters and interesting plot, and season 2 surprised me even more because it feels even more interesting and ambitious. And then we have season 3. And I'm gonna be honest here, Season 3 might be the weakest season so far, but still, it's far from being bad. It's just that the writers are playing safe. Anyway, we have episode 1 called Susie, Do You Copy? And it's just okay. It's a decent episode opener, but that's it. Everything in this episode basically updates us on where are the kids now, what they're doing now. Steven Robin, a new character, played by Maya Hawke, son of Ethan Hawke and daughter of Uma Thurman are working in an ice cream store in a new mall called Star Court. Dustin has a girlfriend, and moms are into Billy. Basically nothing except for the teaser of the episode is fascinating, where a bunch of Russians try to open up the gateway to the Upside Down and mess up. Uh, the ending was pretty decent, it's a bit scary and a bit interesting, and that's it. Basically, Billy got attacked by the monster, called the Mind Flayer. But since Billy is a douchebag, I didn't really care for him all that much. There's even a scene where Dustin goes back home and all his friends sneak up behind him and surprise him. There's nothing wrong with the scene. It's just that I wish my friends would do the same. Yeah, my, my three only friends in this world. I, I hate myself. <laughs> Similarly, episode 2, The Mall Rats, plays safe and doesn't really progress much further. Mike lied to Eleven because he wants to hang out with the boys and he screwed up. Dustin accidentally re received a Russian transmission through the radio and Steve and Robin helped to crack the Russian code. I actually kind of like the ending where they find out where the transmission was recorded. It's a little creepy, but I like it. Magnet stopped working at Joyce's house and her store, and there are sick rats with ADHD everywhere in the town, and then suddenly they would explode and become blob of pulp that runs around like a creature, which is actually real gross. Also, Billy was still alive, but he's now serving the monster, apparently, so there's that. Episode 3, The Case of the Missing Lifeguard, is definitely a step up from the first two episodes. It's way more entertaining. Dots started to connect and action started to take place. The evil Russian storyline is the most interesting storyline for me, even though it's a little cliche. Because the show is exploring unknown territory with a new character who's actually kind of cool. The Billy and Heather storyline is great as well. We kind of don't know what was Billy up to when he took Heather, but there's a scene where something shocking is revealed, and at that point, I think all of us viewers have already figured out the Mind Flayer's plan. The episode also gave us more depth to Will's character, someone who's always stuck in the past, wanting a normal childhood, although all his friends had already grown up. But it's episode 4 that really hooked me in. The Sauna Test. It's a great episode. There are some legitimate revelations and critical points in some storylines on this episode. Team Steve, Dustin, and Robin, aka Scoops Troops, because they work at Scoops Ahoy, um, they finally made it into the secret Russian base. Hopper and Joyce learned more about the magnets and the mysterious lab motorcycle guy who's this tough Russian guy. And most importantly, now the Mind Flayer's presence is acknowledged by the kids. Some shit will go down. 
I also really love how the show pays attention to small detail. That motorcycle guy who showed up before shows up now. And also Hopper used that tobacco chopper to threaten the mayor by almost chopping off his finger. So that's a pretty cool detail, I guess. But most importantly, the last scene is straight up brilliant. Um, the kids managed to trap Billy into the sauna room and heat him up because if he's being possessed by the mind flayer, the mind flayer is afraid of heat. So if they heat Billy up, something's gonna happen. And a really scary and suspenseful fight happened. Anyway, episode five is titled The Flayed and it continues the linear progression. The storyline of Nancy and Jonathan are merged with the kids storyline, confirming that the mind flayer has returned. Other than that, Hopper and Joyce captured a Russian scientist whose name is Alexei. Alexei. And the evil giant Russian was still after them. At the same time, Steve, Robin, Dusty, and Erica learn more about the Russians. But the most memorable thing about the episode is the ending where Nancy and Jonathan were ambushed by some of the flayed people. People who are possessed by the monster. And that was a scary ass scene. And also it appears that the show has upped its grossness and I actually kind of like that even though it's gross. Episode 6, E Pluribus Unum is even better in my opinion. Steve and Robin were injected the truth serum and they were both high out of their minds. And those scenes are actually pretty funny. Also on the same episode, Eleven... Eleven... <laughs> Eleven try to check the source of the mind flayer and in the process billy found out where 11 was and they're out to kill 11 and it's scary i think the fact that murray speaks russian and can be good friends with alexi is a pretty fantastic thing as well makes for some pretty good scenes the next episode the bite further progresses the storyline very steadily another storyline has emerged with the kids and nancy and jonathan storyline i actually really love the scene where steve confessed his love for robin and then the duffer brothers took a really smart turn to let robin come out as a lesbian smart the scene in the house where the Mind Flayer attacked the kids reminded me of the scenes in seasons 1 and 2. Still pretty scary, but could have done more, you know? But hey, it's not over yet. The scenes in the 4th of July fun fair were um, actually the most shocking and tense, where the Russians found Hopper's team and did something terrible. And it all builds up to the climactic finale. Then it's episode 8. The Battle of Starcourt, of course the mall will turn into a friggin' war zone at the finale. And just like the past finales, they all reunite, then break apart into three teams again, because this is a multi-parted mission. Someone has to close the gate in the Russian base, someone has to guide the people who's gonna close the gates to the upside down, and someone must handle Billy and the Mind Flayer. But these two things happen at the same time so it's three teams and as expected i was thoroughly entertained by the episode and it has its very climactic highs and a bittersweet ending that made me shed a tear yes one tear uh, <laughs> i'm not kidding the ending is actually more bitter than sweet though because on season four there's going to be another monster so it's not over but then all this happened but still Anyway, it's brilliant that the writers can somehow manage to slip in a comedic moment where Dustin and his secret girlfriend Susie had to sing a duet in the middle of an intense chase scene. If there is one flaw with the episode, it's the scenes after the climax. They do not really offer much, but hey, I'm happy with everything else on the episode. And yes, I'm giving a spoiler alert. So if you haven't watched the episode, if you haven't watched season three, goodbye or um, skip to the ending where I reveal the score. 
<laughs> so Steve and Robin gave Dustin and Erica a lift to the radio tower so that Dustin could allow communication between walkies and also to guide Hopper, Joyce, and Murray in the secret underground Russian base so as to close the gate and blow up the whole thing and weaken the Mind Flayer. Then Steve and Robin had to drive back to the mall to fight against the Mind Flayer and Billy alongside the kids and Nancy and Jonathan. Before all of this happened, Eleven had a chunk of the Mind Flayer under her skin, so she had to make it burst out of her leg. And it's obviously ripped out of the Alien cookbook, and yet it still grosses me out. But it's a good thing that the show is upping its gore game. Then all this happened. I'm glad that Susie finally showed up though, and it's some of and it is and she is of some use to the whole operation. The scene where Eleven tells Billy about his mom in order to wake him up from being possessed by the Mind Flayer was cheesy but also kind of touching, which leads to a very heartbreaking death. But even more heartbreaking would be Hopper who blew up alongside the gate. That scene legitimately made me shed a tear. It's just incredibly sad. And I know the show had to let David Harbour go because he has a lot of side projects. But um, yeah, still very sad. Then we have the post credit scene where the Demogorgon returns in a Russian military base in Kamchatka, which is this peninsula in East Russia. And if season 4 is about the return of Demogorgons, wouldn't it be a downgrade from the Mind Flayer? But um, still, great episode. Overall, I thought I would be disappointed by season 3, but honestly, I'm not. Maybe it's because I didn't get my hopes up either. While, yes, this season focuses more on rom-com and cheesy 80s evil Russian spy stuffs, it's still pretty damn entertaining, even though the first couple of episodes are slow. The Duffer Brothers clearly plays it safe on the season, and they wear their influences on their sleeves. The Thing, Alien, Aliens... The invasions of the body snatchers, obviously, and the tough Russian guy is basically Terminator. And I'm okay with that. However, it's true that the storylines here are not as fun or as refreshing as the ones on seasons 1 and 2 because they're a little redundant, but I'm glad that they didn't explore more of that government experiment failed punk teen group thing from season 2. But let's be honest here, I have no idea how they would write season 4. Another monster? More rom-com? More evil Russians? I don't know. I hope they come up with something new. But anyway, it's still a pretty solid season. I still enjoyed most part of it, surprisingly. My least favorite episode is the first one, and my favorite is the finale, as usual. And I'm saying Stranger Things Season 3 is pretty cool, and I'm giving it a light to decent 8. So have you watched Stranger Things Season 3 from 1 to 10, how much you rate it, like if you like it, hate if you hate it, and subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching. Also, I forgot to mention one point, is that one of my bigger flaws about the writing and the creating of Stranger Things is that it isn't as eccentric or as weird as other TV shows in comparison. It actually plays really, really safe. It's actually a really, really normal show. If you cut out all the monster stuffs, it's just a regular show. Regular show. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, how much can I complain? Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Goodbye.